Good morning, people. Watch Woman 65. Lisa Boyce here. I have something I want to read before I start this off. The Preeminence of Christ. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they are thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before. He is before all things. And by him and only by him. All things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. And that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto him. Unto himself. For him I say whether they be things on earth or things in heaven. That was Colossians uh, 1, 16 through 20. The reason I bring that up before I get into this uh Story, the reason I bring this up is because there is a problem that has been existing for a long time. And that is people want to put God and country together. You can't do that. I'm not telling you not to love the USA. But you can't put God and country in the same sentence. People love the USA. People love this country more than they do him. I've been seeing this more and more now, lately. People, you can't put God and country in the same sentence. God comes above everything. He is first and foremost. He is the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He's the great I am. He is the Prince of Peace. We cannot put God and country in the same sentence. I hear people say, well, I love God and country, or I love country and God. You can't put them in the same sentence. God takes preeminence above everything and everyone. He's first and foremost. Because without him, we wouldn't be here, and this nation wouldn't be here. I had to put that out there. God, well, the Holy Spirit, well, he put it in my spirit this morning. I was watching a commercial and I, and I was thinking, now I see. People, there are out there, people, and I'm not knocking it. Don't get me wrong. I'm just telling you. You got to put God first. I'm just saying there are people that will die for this country. And I'm I'm for the military 100%. But I wonder what you die for God. I'm just giving you something to think about. These minutes before the rapture. Just something to throw out there. I know I'm going to get slack for it, but that's okay. Um, I wanted to tell you all, this article came off of change, uh, off of the hill, actually. And it's a new study that's warning of a second wave of the coronavirus. And it says here, social distancing measures in Wuhan, China, reduced the number of COVID-19 infections. 
and might have bought the country months of time before a possible second wave of coronavirus cases, which they're now seeing. They're actually now seeing people who tested negative, they're now coming back testing positive. Second wave of coronavirus cases, according to a study, with implications on how long other countries may have to keep similar measures in place. The study published uh, in the Lancet Public Health Journal says reopening businesses and schools in April could delay the highest point of a second wave to October, giving health uh, services time to prepare and respond. Researcher says lifting the measures a month earlier in March could have resulted in a wave of infections in late August. The unprecedented measures of the city of Wuhan has put in place to reduce social contacts in schools and the workplace have helped to control the outbreak. Keisha Prem, a specialist in London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, who co-led the research, said, however, the city now needs to be really careful to avoid prematurely lifting physical distancing measures because that could lead to an earlier secondary peak in cases. Researchers said mathematical modeling to stimulate the effect of extending or easing current school and workplace closures in Wuhan, the city of 11 million people, where the new coronavirus emerged in December. More than 3,000 people died in Wuhan, making up the majority of the deaths in mainland, in mainland China. The mass quarantine in Wuhan is expected to be lifted April 8th, and Chinese officials have been lifting restrictions throughout the surrounding province. The lockdown was put in place in late January. The epicenter of the pandemic has shifted from China to Europe. And the United States continues to grapple with an increasing number of cases and deaths. The study's findings were crucial for policymakers everywhere. I'm going to put this uh, in the description box, the link to the article. It says, World Health Organization, World Health Organization officials on Wednesday expressed a similar viewpoint warning against ending coronavirus lockdowns too early. Like I said the other day, I know they want to get the economy back running and everything, but if they do this too early, it could backfire. That's just my opinion. It could backfire. It says here, these measures are best, sorry about that, these measures are best suppressed and stop transmission so that when restrictions are lifted, the coronavirus doesn't resurge. It doesn't resurge too early. They said that the last thing this country needs is to open up schools and businesses only to be forced to close them again which is what I was saying. That's why everybody looked at Trump like he was crazy when he came out and said that he wants to get everybody back to work by Easter. Now he's backing off of that because he's listening to the advice of his, uh, his staff. So I see that he's not, he's not implementing that too much anymore. I mean, granted, there are some cases in the United States, some states that are hit less than others, but got to be careful of that because it could backfire. I just wanted to come on and give you this uh, news article that came out by The Hill, and I'm going to leave the description of it in the, uh, the link in the description box, but I wanted to come on and tell you that, I wanted to read that verse of scripture and tell you that. And I know people are going to come on and say, well, you're just saying that you can't love your country. You're supposed to love your country because this country is more than any other country. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. Just calm down. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that we have to love God more than country. 
You can't put God and country in the same sentence. That's all I'm saying. I mean, don't write me and comment and tell me that I was wrong or whatever. You know, I mean, without God, we wouldn't have this country. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just giving you all something to think about before anybody go off on me. But I'll be back on later today um, with more. And I will bring, I will put this article in the description box. In the meantime, have a nice morning. Thank you.